Hello, welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 74 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about logging exceptions as information entry type in the Windows Event Viewer. In part 72 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of Windows Event Viewer and in part 73, we have seen how to log exceptions to the Windows Event Viewer as errors. In this session, we are going to log exceptions as information entry type in the Windows Event Viewer. Let's look at that with an example. I have an ASP.NET web application project here. On this web form 1, I have two text box controls where the user can enter their first number and second number. And then once they click this divide button, we divide the first number with the second number and display the result in this label control. Let's look at the code that we have uh, on this button click event. So within the button click event, it's a pretty simple code. We are retrieving the text from the first number text box, converting that to an integer and assigning that to a first number variable. And along the same lines, we are retrieving the second number from the second number text box, converting that to integer, assigning that to second number variable. And we are dividing the first number by second number. Whatever result we get, we are storing that in a result variable, which in turn is then assigned as the text for the label control. And finally, we are setting the full color of that label to navy. So whenever we are dividing these two numbers, if there is any exception, we are handling those exceptions using the respective catch blocks that you can see here. Now the first catch block is catching the format exception. Again, it's always a good practice to catch specific exceptions before catching the general parent exception. And we have discussed about the basics of exception handling in the previous sessions in this ASP.NET video series. So we are catching the format exception. So when do we get the format exception? So let's look at that. When, we run, when I run this application, uh, you should say the calculator load up. Now it's expecting a number to be entered, but then instead of numbers, if we enter alphabets or special characters, then you know this alphabets cannot be converted to integer. So obviously when it tries to do that, we get a format exception. So whenever I am getting a format exception, what we are doing, we are logging that format exception. Now, if you remember, we have discussed about this logger class. This is a custom class that we have written to log the exception to the Windows Event Viewer. So we have the logger class here, which has got the log method. And this log method takes in an exception and logs that to the Windows Event Viewer. Now, again, we have discussed about this logger class that we have written in the previous session. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. So if you look at this method itself, what it's doing, it's taking the exception object, retrieving the exception type, exception message, and exception stack trace. Okay, and then we are appending, you know, the type name, the message, and stack trace to the string builder object. Okay, and then what we are doing after that, we are retrieving the inner exception out of the exception object and assigning that to this inner exception variable. And then we are looping through that inner exception because an exception can be wrapped inside another exception. So if we have an exception inside another exception, we want to loop through every exception that's available and then retrieve the exception type exception message and exception stack trace. That's why we have this while loop here. So while inner exception is not now, this piece of code is exactly a copy of this code. Okay, so we are retrieving the exception type, message and stack trace, and then again assigning the inner exception to inner exception. And we do this as long as the inner exception is not now. And finally, what we are doing here is we are checking if the source exists, presumetech.com, and then we are logging, uh, we are creating an event log object here, setting the source to presume tech, and finally logging the exception. And look at that. Here we are specifying the exception type as error type. But let's say I want to log that as an information. How do we do that? That's what we are going to discuss in this video session. And if you look at uh, what we are doing here, we are logging the format exception using that log method that we have written. And then we are setting the full color to red and the text message uh, only numbers are allowed. That's the message that will be shown to the end user. Okay. And then we have overflow exception. When can an overflow exception occur? Whenever you enter a very big number that an integer can hold. Look at that. That's a very big number. An integer cannot hold that. When I click the divide button, uh, so I get that message. So 
what are we doing here? Whenever an overflow exception occurs, we are logging that overflow exception. We are setting the foo color to red, and then we display this message number must be between you know minimum value of an integer and maximum value of an integer. And that's what is the message that we display to the end user. But then before that, we are logging that exception. And once we log that exception, you can see that within the Windows Event Viewer, so Prajim Tech, this is the custom Windows log to which we are logging that exception. So if I refresh this here, you should see that log there. And if you look at that, this is logged as an error. And look at that, value was either too large or too small. And what's the type of exception we have got? Overflow exception. And at which line did I get that? At line number 23 on webform1.aspx.cs. Okay, so that's the idea. We are logging all these um, entries as errors within the event log. Okay, but how do I log them as information entry type? Because if you look at the Windows logs that we have, some of them are logged as information, warning, etc. So I want to do that. How do we do that? That's what we'll be looking at in this session. So let's go back to Prajim Tech Logs. Okay, let's look at this code further and I have divide by zero exception obviously if the user attempts to divide a number by zero we get infinity we cannot divide a number by zero so an exception will be drawn on uh, divide by zero exception again we are logging that exception setting the full color to red and then displaying a message to the user De denominator cannot be zero okay if there is any other exception apart from these three exceptions then we have the general base exception catch block here which catches any other type of exception and locks that to the event viewer uh, and then display this an unknown problem uh, has occurred please try later okay and our logger class is doing all the hard work here, logging the exception to the uh, event viewer. But then I want to correct this. Um, this log method can be simplified further instead of, uh, you know, look at this. This piece of code here is an exact copy of this code here. So we can simplify this further using a do while loop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this entire stuff here. And then I'm going to copy this piece of code. OK, so if you look at this code, all it's doing here is it's retrieving the exception type, message, and stack trace, and then appending that to the string builder object. OK, so we have the string builder object. So we can get rid of this line. OK, so what I want to basically do here, I'm going to get rid of this entire while loop. I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to say, do this. OK, so we have the exception object. The exception object comes in. Um, we are creating a string builder object instance. And then we are retrieving the exception type, exception message, and then exception stack trace. And then what we will do here is we'll create instead of that inner exception object, I'm going to just say exception is equal to exception dot inner exception. So we are retrieving the inner exception out of that exception object and then assigning that back to the exception variable. And then here we will check if exception is not equal to null. OK, so what is this going to do? This is going to loop through this while loop as long as we have an inner exception. And then it retrieves the exception type message and stack trace, appends that to the string builder object. And then finally, we are using that string builder object to log uh, you know, to the event viewer. OK, so now this is a lot better. We just have do while loop here, and the single loop is doing everything. If you have just one exception, uh, you know, one exception without an inner exception, this loop will be executed only once. But if you have multiple inner exceptions, it's going to loop through those inner exceptions. As long as there is an inner exception, retrieve the exception type, message, and stack trace, and then finally log that to the event viewer. But if you look at this, it's logging that as an error uh, event entry type within the event log. Let's see how to do this, um, not to log as information entry type. And to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, look at this right now. I am going to pass in 
this method currently it's hard coding the event log entry type so what we will do is we'll actually pass in a parameter an additional parameter to this method I'm going to pass it as event log entry type that's the type of the parameter that we want to pass and the variable is going to be that one the parameter name okay so but then if I just leave it here like this what happens to my existing application it breaks because within your logger you have a log method initially it was just taking one parameter but now you have changed it to take two parameters so obviously the existing client code client code meaning uh, the code which is using this class will break so here web form one is actually using that class logger class and logger class doesn't have a log method which takes one argument look at the message there okay because why we changed that to take two parameters okay so in order to make the existing applications work as they are I need to provide another method but before we do that let's remove this hard coding here so what I'm gonna do since I have a parameter that I'm passing into this method I'm gonna remove this hard coding here and then I'm gonna say let's remove this hard coding so event log entry type that's the parameter that's coming in so all we are doing is we are passing in that here that's it we're done okay but then we have to fix the breaking client code the breaking code in web form one so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna provide another log method so by default so let's copy this method signature I'm going to copy that and I'm going to get rid of this one, the additional parameter. Look at that. So now I have this log method. Okay. So if we look at webform1.aspx now, this code is not breaking anymore because why the logger class has that one uh, method which takes one parameter. Now what we are going to do is we are going to, in this method, we are going to invoke this log method. Okay, this is okay we are going to invoke that method and if you look at that method it expects two parameters so it requires an exception object I'm going to pass that exception object and the second parameter I'm going to hard code the event entry type as error so what we are basically doing here is if somebody calls your log method without passing in this parameter then we are going then we are going to lock that exception by default as an error but in case if they pass the event log entry type they can specify how they they want to log that exception do they want to log that as an error or information warning etc okay so now look at this we have two methods here so in our web form let's say for example I want to log maybe format exception as an information entry type to do that all I have to do is use the other overloaded version so the moment I open the um, parenthesis here look at that it's showing I have two versions of log method available one version which takes just the exception object and the other version which takes the event log entry type enum as well so I'm going to use that parameter so event log entry type dot I'm going to log that as information okay on along the same lines let's say if I get an overflow exception I want to do the same thing as well I want to log it as information but on the other hand let's say when I when when a user tries to divide a number by zero then I want to log it as an exception I mean an error as well an error okay so I'm gonna leave that as it is okay so now let's go ahead and run this so now obviously overflow exception format exception both of these should be logged as information so when I when do I get a format exception if I enter alphabets instead of numbers you know this cannot be converted into numbers so we get a format exception so only numbers are allowed and if we go back to the in, uh, event viewer refresh that look at that I get a format exception but look at how it is logged it is logged as an information entry type and similarly if I try to maybe enter a very big number again this will be logged as an information entry type so let's refresh that so that's logged as overflow exception as an information entry type but on the other hand if I attempt to divide a number by zero maybe I want to divide three by zero and click divide 
you cannot divide a number by zero but then if you remember we are logging that as an error entry type okay so in this video we have seen how to log exceptions to the event viewer as information entry type rather than as error entry type along the same lines all you have to do is use this enumerator to control how you want to log uh, you know the entry within the event viewer on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day